Hello everyone and welcome to the latest installment of Real History. I am your host, history professor Jared Frederick, and I'm pleased to announce that in this episode we will be analyzing the brand new teaser trailer for Ridley Scott's much anticipated historical biopic, Napoleon, starring none other than Joaquin Phoenix. This is a movie that I have been looking forward to for a long time, and frankly, I'm surprised how well under wraps it has been. Very few photos have been revealed about it, and so seeing the trailer here for the first time today, I suspect will be a much anticipated treat. Before we take a look at the trailer, I had the opportunity to converse with a historian colleague of mine, Jim Taub, who is an expert in many realms of French military history. I'm going to be incorporating some of his insight along the way, and I am hopeful that at some future point we will be able to incorporate Jim more formally into a future episode. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and do a historical breakdown of Ridley Scott's Napoleon trailer. Some good eye candy there to pull us in. 1793. No doubt you've seen the chaos in the streets. Oh, definitely Marie Antoinette there. An example, our France will fall. Well, yeah, the what guillotine, most this definitely. The of defense was transferred to you. Good recoil on that artillery there. I promise you brilliant successes. Everyone. Mm -hmm. Everyone around is what is this costume you have on? This is my <laughs> uniform. Everyone so I led the French victory at Toulon. What is your name? Napoleon. Has the course of my life just changed? It's a good pickup line. Oh wow, the Sphinx. I'm destined for Ooh. greatness. But those in power will wow. see me as a sword. I suggest you take the throne as a king. Shall we vote? Democracy at gunpoint. Not in the coronation, <laughs> infamously. This vermin has held the world hostage. Wow. With his egotism and his lack of simple good manners. You think you're great. Some good you descriptives there. It's nothing without me. Mm -hmm. All of Europe is uniting forces against me. What's the outcome of this if you don't succeed? Your Majesty, we are discovered. Good. Mm -hmm. Austerlitz. It's a trap! I'm the first to admit when I make a mistake. It's a trap! I simply never do. Wow. Most impressive. So a few takeaways here after we have analyzed the teaser trailer for Napoleon. I think it is very smart on the part of the filmmakers to begin with this rather iconic vignette of Marie Antoinette's execution at the hands of the guillotine. Uh, this of course took place in October of 1793 and it is amidst the revolutionary fervor of France here in the 1790s that will ultimately propel Napoleon Bonaparte into his iconic role of European history. Uh, so I, I think it is a, a good iconic moment to begin with because it throws the audience into the unrest and the chaos that was France in this generation. The showdown with the artillery in the streets, I have no doubt, is a depiction of the events of October 5th, 1795 a brawl in the streets that occurred between French revolutionary troops 
and members of society who were still in support of the royalty. And this was Napoleon's big call to action. At this time, he was a brigadier of artillery, I believe, and he came to the support of the French government that was known at that time as the Directory in opposition to the Royalists. And this is where he proved uh, how dependable of a person that he could be under pressure. Many, many dozens of people were uh, slain amidst all of this. Ironically enough, in the long run, uh, in just a little bit over four years' time, Napoleon orchestrates a coup against the Directory, the very entity that he had been supporting here in October of 1795. And so it certainly speaks to the helter-skelter nature of French politics at this given moment. Very interesting. In fact, I'd be disappointed if there was not a depiction of Napoleon's Egyptian campaign, uh, which took place well over the course of two years between 1798 and 1801. And what Napoleon was doing here at this stage of the game is that he was out to take over the Ottoman territories of modern-day Egypt and Syria. And we see the Sphinx here, we see the pyramids, in fact we see artillery shells uh, plowing into the pyramids. Uh, I don't think that ever happened, though many of these large-scale battles did happen around the pyramids. I think it says something really iconic though, that these icons of a previous empire are being destroyed by a subsequent empire. And so I undoubtedly think that there's a little bit of symbolism being expressed here in this regard. And it speaks to the passing of time and the transfer of power. So I suppose I can forgive it, all things considered. I think the choice to show Napoleon on horseback leading a cavalry charge with saber in hand is a very interesting one uh, because there's really no evidence to suggest that he did lead a cavalry charge in such a dramatic fashion. As I said, he was an artillerist by heart, a very good use, an eye for use of artillery. He also could use his cavalry quite effectively as well. But uh, throwing him into the midst of the action certainly makes for a good screenshot or poster image. So perhaps a little bit more creative license being taken here on the part of the filmmakers. Interestingly enough, uh, some have made the claim that Napoleon, for as iconic as he is, wasn't actually that great a horseman. It, it seemed that he would often uh, slump in the saddle as he was riding around, and although he is considered one of the most uh, brilliant military strategists in human history, uh, perhaps his equestrian skills weren't the greatest. In this rather iconic, if not notorious, moment where we see Napoleon coronating himself by uh, putting uh, the crown on his head, uh, a legend indicates that this was meant to be a, a rebuff of Pope Pius VII, uh, where uh, Napoleon is essentially saying, uh, my authority is greater than that of God's. And so it perhaps speaks to his ego, it perhaps speaks to his hubris, it underscores his ambition. Uh, you could open it up to interpretation in your own life. I remember my history teacher in high school talking about this, and he didn't have a high opinion uh, of Napoleon um, on a number of different levels, but uh, that, that was a, a real sticking point, uh, really speaking to Napoleon's attitude about institutional religion and his place within it. So we'll see. At this moment, at about a minute and a half into the trailer, we see these British troops in a tactical square formation with French troops encircling them. And it is incredibly reminiscent of the 1970 movie Waterloo, in which American actor Rod Steiger plays Napoleon. Um, in fact, I believe he gave up the role of Patton, which came out that same year, to play Napoleon in that movie. Perhaps not the greatest career decision on his choice, but in any case, if you are interested in this movie, you absolutely have to check out the movie Waterloo from 1970. And as of the moment that I'm filming this, I believe that entire film is in available in full uh, right here on YouTube. That is a fantastic movie that uses tens of thousands of extras. 
and it really captures the scale, the chaos, the intensity of what was the iconic battle of the Napoleonic era, which took place in June of 1815. I have no doubt that Ridley Scott had seen that movie, is a fan of that movie, and will undoubtedly try to replicate certain elements of that film into his own. We shall see. Here we have a great little line by actor Rupert Everett. Uh, I haven't seen anything in a long time. It's interesting to see him here. Uh, I'm not sure who he plays as of yet. Uh, at the time I'm filming this, the, the full cast listing uh, has not become fully available. It's possible, though, that he is playing the Duke of Wellington. He is in a British military uniform here. Some of the medals on his uniform seem to match those of the Duke of Wellington. I, I could be wrong. I don't have the full details as of yet. In the previous movie that I just mentioned, Waterloo, Duke of Wellington is wonderfully played by the late, great Christopher Plummer, uh, which really, uh, he really captured the, the aristocratic background of the Duke of Wellington quite well, I think. But uh, I'll be interested to see if that is the character who I think it is. I'm guessing the actress that we see here is Josephine, Napoleon's first wife. I'm really fascinated in seeing what the dynamics of this power couple will be as depicted in the film. Uh, unfortunately, and spoiler alert here, <laughs> drown this uh, next 10 seconds out here if you don't want anything ruined. Um, she actually dies, I believe, of pneumonia while her husband is in exile on Elba. Um, and so I'll be interested to see how all of that plays out. And I'm also interested to see if and how Napoleon's second marriage to Maria Louise of Austria will be depicted. And that was kind of an interesting strategic marriage uh, in and of itself. But uh, how will the women of Napoleon's life be depicted? How will they tie into his desires for power? I think these are some really interesting questions to consider. These wintry scenes that we see here near the end of the trailer is undoubtedly a depiction of the Battle of Austerlitz, which took place in early December of 1805. And one of the very famous stories associated with that battle is that the, the Allied army was withdrawing to the south. They were crossing over these frozen ponds, and Napoleon lured them into this trap where his un artillery unleashed a, a devastating barrage, thereby breaking the ice the uh, enemy troops fall down within the water and they, they drown amidst all of the chaos. There are stories of, of this uh, floating around here, no pun intended. Uh, but in many ways, there's also not a lot of evidence to suggest that this actually happened. Uh, in fact, uh, some historians are of the mind that this was a myth that was propagated by Napoleon himself to merely bolster his own reputation and that of his army. And so the interesting question here now is, will this movie simply be fortifying myths that Napoleon himself created in the name of good, stirring entertainment and drama? Um, and so these are some of the, the fine-pointed details that I think historians will be considering once Napoleon hits theaters. I think this is a movie that's going to initiate a lot of interesting conversations about this man who is both admired and controversial at the same time within the historical record. Some other things that I think we need to think about as we take Napoleon, the movie, into consideration is, well, will Ridley Scott be able to save the traditional historical epic. In our age of Marvel movies and superhero films and animated flicks, it's really hard for historical epics to gain traction. Um, historical films just don't do that well in theaters anymore. Uh, the few that, that show in theaters anyway. Um, and so I'm interested in seeing will, will Ridley Scott and Joaquin Phoenix's performance Will it be able to be enough of an experience, an immersive experience, to draw people in and perhaps reverse the tide? 
The unfortunate trend of big budget historical films being unable to find an audience uh, afflicted one of Ridley Scott's more recent films entitled The Last Duel, which we have also analyzed here on Real History. This was a fantastic movie, and it was also quite accurate unlike Gladiator, which we've also taken a look at here on this channel. Uh, Ridley Scott is kind of a mixed bag when it comes to historical films. When you look at The Last Duel or Black Hawk Down, very accurate films. Some of his other historical epics, not so much. Where will this film fall in? Will it be able to engage with an audience? As always, I like to make reading recommendations. And I suspect a lot of you will be interested in learning more about Napoleon, uh, given the upcoming release of this film. And I think a really good one that's really digestible for you is Napoleon, a concise biography by historian David A. Bell. This is published by Oxford University Press. I think a, a really great publishing house, does a lot of great history titles, and the book is a mere 150 pages. And so if you want to learn the basics of Napoleon's life, so you have a little bit of literacy heading into this film and you can share it with fellow viewers, you can't go wrong with David A. Bell's biography. Go check it out. That wraps up everything for this short episode of Real History. Be sure to check out all of our other great content on this channel and also our website. We always welcome your support in varied forms. That is what keeps this channel going. And if you haven't done so already, please make sure you click that subscribe button down below. We always appreciate it. Until we see you next time on Real History, stay curious.